I recently had Ernie Reinhardt from radio station 4680Q, where he has a talk show called The Talk of the Town. His guests can't always make the 2 p.m. airtime for the show, so once in a while, we record his show right here at Roy Studio Adventures. If you'd like to tune into Ernie's show, Talk of the Town, it airs on Thursdays at 2 p.m. on Internet Radio 4680Q. It's a great show, always something new, different topics, and interesting people. Today, Ernie's talking to Dan Diggins about his songs and much more. And that's coming up next on Roy Studio Adventures. I understand that you just did something musically. A music, okay, thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> yes. Well, did they catch me? I don't know. Ah, yes. You, <laughs> there are cameras <laughs> everywhere, Dan. So what yeah. did you do? Tell me, tell me what, what you so, did. Well, so recently I've been doing some stuff here uh, with Roy at his at his studio doing some videos and it's been it's been a pleasure. Uh, and so there's a song one of the ones we recently did is a song that I wrote back in 2009, uh, based out of a personal experience in my life with a family member who happens to be my son, who I, who I care very much about. And, uh, you know, it's hard as a parent to watch uh, a child of yours struggle. It's part of the parenting game. It's what happens. We have to learn to let go. Uh, and when, when a kid's struggling and... Uh, well, I mean, being that my kids came from a broken family, it bothered me a lot to watch them struggle because I felt like I wanted to help. And there was a lot of times I felt I couldn't be there. Anyways, my son did move in with me for a while after after uh, I lived alone for about eight years. My son and his sister came to live with me for about eight years. That's what messed them up. <laughs> That's what messed him up. Yeah, he would have been fine if he had to come yeah. to live with me. <laughs> yeah, you should have come to me first. I would have no. told him. And so uh, don't do it. And so you know, he just he had a, he had uh, things that he was dealing with in his own personal life it became difficult for him. And I and as a dad, I just wanted to be there, but sometimes it's hard because uh, things can get there can be a lot of tension. So watching him uh go through his struggles and try to find his way how old is he well he now he's 31 and he's doing very well you know which is uh nice to see this this song has kind of come full circle mm -hmm. he was about 18 when i wrote it and it was out of the experience of living with him and kind of trying to say i'm your dad i love you i want the best for you you got to pull up your socks and find your own way, you know, and and knowing that as a parent, and yet having to stand back and watch somebody struggle that you really care about, but you know, believing that that they want to find their own way as much as <laughs> probably more than I would want them to, you know, and let help being there to support, but hoping, praying that that happens, and and letting it happen, and that's kind of what this song is about, you know. I found uh, going through school going through life there were friends of mine who right from the get-go knew what they wanted to do in life yeah. and, and it always oh. puzzled me and, uh, <laughs> I'm you glad know, to hear you say that yeah it, it puzzled me because <laughs> I would listen and I'm talking about when we were around 10 11 or 12 and invariably it didn't happen often but what someone would say well what do you want to do when you get older and they'd yeah. say well I want to be a whatever right and I would listen and I would think how the heck do you know that Fast forward mm -hmm. to high school, same question, different people, a common theme, and people would know. And I was still puzzled. Went through university, people really knew then. I was still puzzled. I thought, how in the world do people, some people know exactly yeah. what they want to do? Mm -hmm. So for people like myself and maybe your son, <clears throat> it's a challenge because you look sure. around and there are other people that are going right for what they think they are or what they want to do. Yeah. And the rest are still, and I'm 80 years old and I still don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, do you know what? Break it, me a song. Uh, yeah, 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 I probably could because that's a pretty common human theme. It's 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 part of, of, of humanity. It's just what happens with people a lot. It's a, the journey of being a human being. You know? And so uh, did the song just come to you one day or were you working on it? Or you well, no, I... I uh, 
it's a little a little cloudy because it was a long time ago when I wrote this, but I believe I had this idea, and I had uh, and I had the guitar and I played a few chords and the idea came together in in I could hear a song and I could had some words and I could hear a melody. So usually when that happens, if I take a pen and a piece of paper and sit down and start writing, it'll come out and I kind of write in the form of poetry. So I don't find it all that difficult to put words together in, in prose. And if, if I just do that and just write the ideas that are there and what, what I'm feeling in my heart and let that direct what the words should be, so for, then this probably came out in about a half an hour, this, the whole song. So for you, the words come first. Well, you heard the melody in your head. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, sometimes it's, a, it's a, a lyric line that will come. A lot of times it's just, I got an idea and I can hear the music and here's the words that would go with it. <laughs> and if I grab the guitar and a pa piece of paper, usually a song will come out when that happens. And sometimes it's, I got to work at it a bit, but if I just kind of let it flow and don't think it, to, overthink it too much, usually within an hour there's a complete song. I remember uh, listening to an interview uh, with Neil Sadaka. Yeah. And uh, he was trained classically on the piano. And the interviewer asked him how he came up with his songs. And yeah. he said he would uh, pick, uh, I guess you'd call them notes. I, I know nothing about music. Yeah. So he'd put a few together. So it would be like, da, 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 da. So that's all he would have. Yeah. So with that, he would continue on. Well, what goes after, da, 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 da. And he would write the whole thing out with notes. And then he would sit at the piano thinking, now what words go with that? Really? <laughs> and I found that amazing. Everybody's got a different way of doing yeah. that, you know, where, yeah. For me, uh, usually, uh, not every song, but a lot of the songs I write are out of my own personal life experience. Something that is meaningful to me, something that uh, is, you know, has a lot of depth and weight to it. Okay, and it so it makes now, me want to express it, you know, that way. Yeah. So now, now let's say somebody came to you mm -hmm. and said, you know, I'm going through some tough times, or I've had this wonderful time. Could you write a song about that? I probably could. You know, I, you wouldn't I mean, feel every, it as everything. Much. People, as human beings, we see things from our own perspective and out of our own experience. So anything that I would write would probably be colored with some of my own experience. But it, I find it easy to relate to people. You know, especially if it's life experience stuff. And I could I could empathize with somebody enough to write a song that may be meaningful to them as well in, in, in their own. And what about those songs that aren't meaningful? But uh, well, uh, no, who who wrote the song "Sitting on the Dock of a Bay"? Do you remember that? You no, know, I don't know who wrote that, but I remember the song right? for sure. Yeah, sitting on the, the dock of the bay, bay watching, watching the tide roll. Yeah. So I remember the, and I don't remember who did it, but they were sitting on the dock of a bay, yeah. and he had to come up with a song. So. And so he's thinking, well, yeah. what do I got? What do I know? Well, all I know is what I, I'm sitting what on the I'm dock of a right bay. Now. Yeah, hey. <laughs> so a song came out of that, and, yeah. and I'm sure Margaritaville was the same. <laughs> yeah, but quite possibly. Not not anything meaningful, but this is where I am. But this is just what's happening. And this is what's happening. Well, and to me, I look at a song like that, and I go, there, there is a lot of date meaning underneath that, because if I listen to the, the rest of the lyrics of that song, it sounds like, okay, here's a guy who's... For him to say, sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the time roll away, at some level he's been feeling, I'm wasting my time or something, just sitting here. Yeah. There would have to be for, you know. And, and maybe that's just a meaning that I read into it. Not sure, but. Well, that's a good thing because if, um, have we got some beverage here? We do. So da this our is... friend uh, Dan Monroe, I was in a band with him uh as Roy was years ago. It was rock and rodeo, I think, when yes. you were in it. Yep. And I joined it as when it was rock and rodeo and then it turned into the Dan Monroe band and uh and I had I had written uh a bluesy kind of song <laughs> after the after uh the end of my uh third marriage and uh, third marriage yeah third now marriage. there's a song in there there's a lot of songs <laughs> there's a, this and could and be this an album what, and this is one of them <laughs> I wrote I wrote a song called black and white blues oh and uh anyways uh, so we were rehearsing, and I, and I 
you know, Dan Monroe came there and the drummer and the, uh, the bass player, Billy. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, guys, I got this blues song I, I just wrote. Let me play it for you. So I sat down and I played it for him. And Dan goes, uh, I really like that. Could you write a song like that for me? <laughs> and uh, and uh, I said, yeah, OK, I, I'm sure I can. So again, I wrote it out of my own experience, but it, it was called Three Times Daily. And it was about how I was in this messed up relationship with this girl. And uh, anyways, it, it talked about, well, I, I went to see the doctor and uh, he said, you know, make love to her three times a day and it'll all be okay. <laughs> and everybody wants yeah, the name you... of that doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't try to give me pills. Anyways, yeah, so it was it was about that, you know, and I, and that's what I wrote the song about. It was still out of my own experience. But Dan loved the song, and we ended up recording it on an EP that we did. It's it's out there on the internet somewhere. Dan Monroe Band, three times daily. You know what I'd three like times, to do? Yes, yeah, three times. One of my fantasies is to sit oh, down. I don't know. Wait a second now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, Harry? Well, <laughs> your doctor's idea uh, is resonating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I've often fantasized. Well, I've always wanted to be able to write a song. Yeah. And I have no talent. So the fantasy is to sit down with a songwriter like, <laughs> and have a beer and just co-write a song. Like pick a topic, yeah. like sitting on the dock of a bay or whatever the topic happens to come into your head while you're sitting with a buddy <laughs> and having a beer. Yeah. And actually writing a song because I think that would be a hoot for someone who has no talent and could never do it on my own. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> well, it could be. It could be. See, I, I find it easy because when I, when I write, I, I tend to uh, write the verses and the courses in the form of poetry where, you know, there's a, there's a certain cadence to the rhythm of the, of the lyrics that, that all is congruent through the whole thing. And, and there's rhyming words in it, and you know, like there the, once was a girl from St. Louis, <laughs> yeah. something there, like that. Yeah, yeah. We see, see how there once was a I man from Nantucket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, we went yeah, to the so, doctor. Who so said, if you're if you understand that kind of thing and it makes sense to you, I, you know, you pick pick something that is means something to you in your life or whatever. Sitting on the dock of the bay, or whatever. Sitting in the lineup at Tim Hortons or anything. And if there's some lyric words that come to you that are in a cadence and they and you can make them rhyme, okay, just what could you do down. with this? What could you do with this line? Eating anchovies at night. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm, that's how bad I am. Might taste so good, but it ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> I found the right guy. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to Bridgeview Motors in Port Colborne, Canada, who has helped us on many occasions with our car repairs. At Bridgeview Motors and Auto Repairs, you get a car at a fair price and a business that stands behind it. It's family owned and operated, and I will leave a link in the description below. I did not get paid for this ad. Yeah, so, <laughs> so back to your song, Dan. Did you have any... Uh inspirations uh heroes mentors that were in this business that you said i want to be like that i know i can do that oh yeah for sure uh when it comes to this style of thing which is like acoustic folky type of stuff cat stevens was a big oh, influence yeah. i just loved cat stevens yeah jim crochet yeah um gordon whitefoot yeah james taylor oh boy i you know i i, I love that kind of uh we well, had some good... Harry Chapin. Oh my god. I mean gosh, the yes. storytelling. Yeah, Harry Chapin. For yeah. sure. Well, yeah. Gordon Lightfoot. Well, everyone yeah, that I you mean, mentioned. They, yeah, they they there's meaning in their songs there. I think like you you said uh, the word a while ago universal. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about something that comes out of a person's heart that general humanity will understand because everybody's got a heart. What what genre is that? That, that that those singers and that type of music i i would to me it's i would classify it as like folk folk rock folk yeah. rock type of yeah thing. i hear it it sounded like i mentioned to you earlier it sounded a little bit country mm -hmm. and maybe it's just the the tone of your voice <laughs> that that makes me think that yeah but it definitely i would say folklorish yeah uh, that's why i thought um johnny cash he reminds me of mm -hmm. of folklore uh storytelling yeah yeah, 
I mean, it's just, it's, when I was younger, I didn't uh, express myself well. I didn't know, really understand communication. I kept a lot of things bottled up, kept things to myself. And so I think when it, when I started to play guitar, it was a way for me to, uh, and it still is, to take what I'm feeling inside and express it in a way that when it's just an instrument, it's expressing it without words, but it's expressing it nonetheless. And it's a, it helps me to write songs because I take what I feel and I can, I know how to use the guitar well enough that I can take what I'm feeling and portray it through that. And when I add words to it, then it's it's taking the the things that I'm thinking about or feeling around all that stuff and actually putting uh, well the words to it, expressing it in written form as well as uh, the the emotions that are involved with the music behind it as well. So for me, it just it just feels like a really neat thing to do. It's it's. How old were you when you started playing? I was uh, fifteen. Guitar. So you you learned to play the guitar. Is that five strings? Six. Six strings. Unless I break one. Then okay. I... <laughs> so are there guitars with more than six or, oh, oh, le yeah. or less than <laughs> yeah, six? Sure. sure. And, and can you play them? Like if somebody just <laughs> handed you this stringed instrument. Well, okay. My, my son's got an eight string guitar. And uh, eh, I, I would have to really spend time with it because... I mean, to me, is playing that, a guitar is, is like a... Hmm? Is that common? Mm. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, shredders. It, it, for shredders, yeah. Guys that are like younger guys that are shredding or... There's there's so many... Uh, geez, some of the styles have been opened up since Eddie Van Halen and, and Randy Rhodes with all the tapping and everything. I'm, oh, yeah, I yeah. see some guys that they've got like seven or eight string guitars and they're they're doing stuff. I'm I'm like, boy, oh boy, that... I, there's no way I, I'm not, I can't do that. Never learned how to. Well, and it doesn't I mean you can't do it. You just, well, you I would, you yeah, put the it's time not in. something I was inclined to do, right. you know, but, but yeah, so there's, there are seven string guitars, eight string guitars. Isn't there uh, one, a, a double, like 12 strings? Sure. Or? Oh yeah. A double necker. Yep. That would have usually a 12 string on the top and a six string on the bottom. And yeah, <laughs> that's an orchestra. <laughs> well, yeah, Jimmy Page used one of those. He's famous for having that uh, that double neck uh, SG. As uh, Don Felder as well from the Eagles, he's got that white one that uh, I saw him, saw him play in uh, here in the Falls, and boy, he was just fantastic. Is your so, goal to record, put out CDs? I don't even know what uh, they do anymore. CDs, cloud music. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what they do. So, so when you write, what's the? Do you have a goal? Not, not really. No, my 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 thing is just to get it out uh, there. Get it out there as a, an expression. I think, if anything, <clears throat> if I can write a song that touches someone, that is meaningful to them in their life, and it it makes them go, "Oh, gee, I'm not the only one," <laughs> and they feel some relief from that. Yeah. Or they they feel like, "Wow, that happened to them too. I'm okay. Maybe." Maybe it'll give them some comfort. Maybe it'll give them some understanding. Or everybody, everybody in that I know, that is a grounded human being, has issues in their life that have caused them grief, trouble, torment, children, family, all kinds of things. And if I can write a song that um, that helps someone, so how do you how do you reach them though? What's what's well? So, so I got things out on. I mean, I. I guess I don't. I don't release a lot of stuff and put it out there to try to get a lot of exposure. I got things out on YouTube. Okay. Um, um, it, Roy's helped me a lot with that. Yeah. To, did you bring to, your guitar with you today? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, th do you think maybe is it handy that you could maybe strum a little? Why not? I'm just saying. Sure. Yeah. I'm just yeah, saying, anyway. Dan. Well, why not? Well, okay. Who's Let's... gonna stop me? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody here. Okay, so now you've got your gonna, guitar. What am I going to do now? <laughs> so do, did, did you name your guitar? You know, I, I haven't, no. No, I just, no. It's just an old friend. Some that people you, do that. I yeah. I just never, no. So if, if you're playing for yourself, for your own enjoyment, do you play blues? Do you play folk? Do you play country? 
What do you gravitate to well, for your own amusement? I, I usually, if I if I pick up the acoustic guitar, I'm, I'm playing like just some nice finger picking stuff that that sounds nice to me. And uh, well, you're, you're, here's, here's yeah, an improvise, yeah, that yeah. I, so this would be a, a piece that I came up with over the years just to pick up the guitar and and play because I want to kind of disappear into it and I and I just like what I'm hearing mm -hmm. Okay, first question: Is that something that you created, or is yeah. that a, you created that? Yep. Well, to me, that has all the makings of a hit. Well, thank you. The f I, the feel that I got from that was like, I hope that's your music because yeah. if you could put words to that, that is great. Well, thanks. thanks yeah, I love that. That's something I've written a lot of instrumental music. I've got a. Oh, Dan, I'm telling you that that has got a great feel because I felt that one. Really? Yes, I yeah, did. Thank you. Well, that means a lot to me. Yeah. Because really, yeah, I didn't intentionally write that. I was just playing guitar and I started to play this, and and it just kind of came out. And over time, it became more to where it now. That's it's what that's what group. happened with the Margaritaville. And right. Look where that took them. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and usually, if if a song's for me, if it's going to have lyrics. Generally, the lyrics will be there right from the start when the music comes out. If it's an instrumental piece, then this is why you. It, this is why you need me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not. <laughs> so okay, what else do you got? You got anything else that you can improvise on? Uh, well, let's see. What about something bluesy? Yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, well, I'll play it. Okay, so here, here's that song, uh, I don't know, we'll play the whole thing, but I'll play a little bit of it, that black and white blues one I was telling you oh, about. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like the title. Uh, uh. They'll come to me in a second. I try to give you all my loving, but you just keep on shoving me. It just ain't right. It's black and white. Oh, you make me blue. I like that. Yeah. So there's more to it, but yeah, of course. Black and white, you make me blue. That's yeah, good. Black and white that's, blues. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So you like blues? You like, I like telling blues, stories yeah. in the folk style yeah. manner? Yeah. What about? Have you tackled jazz? Not, not really. No, I, no, I never really got into jazz. Or, now this would really be jazz. No, I, I can't say I know jazz, but there's another. Here's another one that I wrote. Uh, I was playing down at the Made in the Mist Marketplace. Yes, I know it well. A few years ago, Jerry Selfie got me involved with I that. I know Jerry you know, Selfie. Jerry, great guy. Haven't great seen guy. him in 60 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good friends. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. And, and this is a song that I wrote when I was playing down there. So, uh, anyways, I'll just play a little bit of it and see if it, if it makes sense or not. Okay. Been feeling inspired, tired of talking on the phone. You're stoking up the fire, but you don't wanna be alone. Let me walk you in the moon. 
moonlight Let me hold you in these arms of love Feel the gentle whisper of the autumn's cool breeze The stroll on the shoreline just before it's time to leave I ain't asking for a lifetime, I ain't asking for a thing Just close your pretty eyes and sing Let me rock you in the moonlight, let me hold you in these arms of love. I like the lyrics. Thank you. I could actually see people walking on the beach. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Are you currently in any bands? Yes, yes. I'm with uh, a band, local band from Niagara called Talisman, uh, which is guys that I grew up with and amazingly back together playing with them again. Another band called Scurvy Dogs. Scurvy is, Dogs. Scurvy, we, we like to say, we're Scurvy Dogs, and that's the name of the band, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's with uh, Daryl Gray and Jamie Constance from Helix. And, uh, well, lo and behold, uh, some neat opportunities are unfolding, because Daryl Gray called me last week, and they've got an acoustic, a Helix unplugged acoustic show coming up and their guitar player Mark uh, has had some surgery on his arm and, he can, and he's not able to make it so he asked me if I could fill in for him. Do you ever play for charities? Uh, yeah, I have, I have done uh, I can't really remember what. I'll tell you one thing I did get involved in a number of years ago, back in about 2005 or 6 was I, I started to venture into music therapy which uh you know, I have a couple stories for you. Boy, well, really, yeah. So I, boy, I, uh, well, I ended up, you know. So uh, this is one thing really that that really astounded me that that I, that happened, which really made me realize the power of what playing nice music on an instrument can do. My my uh, ex wife Deanna worked at a place called Niagara Arms. It was a retirement center uh, in St. Catharines. Um, I, I decided I wanted to take my acoustic guitar and I went up, uh, what they call it was a lockup ward. It was the Alzheimer's floor. So people with all different levels of Alzheimer's dementia and right. things, right? Sure. So, and I just wanted to sit and play some instrumental music, you know, for the, for these people. And, uh, so I ended up doing that. The one time I was sitting there playing like I am now, room full of uh, probably 20 or 30 people. And uh, I started to play and the door opened and the nurse rolled in this lady that was on a stretcher. She was laying on a stretcher and she set her over there and she just laid still, didn't, didn't move, just laid there peacefully. I played for about 40 minutes and I finished and I started packing my guitar up. The nurse came in to get her and I noticed she was starting to, vibrate and move and twitch around and by the time she got her out of the room she was moving around a lot like and the nurse came over to me and she said that was amazing because she never stops moving she never stops moving but the whole time i played she was, she was just laid there and boy, boy that's powerful yeah well to me music for me personally uh, uh, a lot of times especially the nicer weather like it is now i'll keep a guitar in my car uh, you know, and and if I'm out somewhere and I got time to kill, I'll go find a nice quiet place like in Burgoyne Woods somewhere and get out my guitar and just sit there and play in the in the, in amongst the trees and the birds and the squirrels and and uh, I find when I when I pick up the instrument and start playing, it's like therapy for me. It's like mental emotional therapy. I stop thinking about a whirlwind of things and my mind just kind of gets very present very in the moment so i'm not thinking about a bunch of stuff and it's like it's very soothing and very healing for me yeah. that you know so years ago i was oh well, so i was probably 16 15 16 years old and i was at the point where the band that i have together with now talisman we were together then as kids called talisman 
And we used to play at the Queensway Hotel in St. Catharines a lot. And back then it was six nighters. We we were playing from Monday to Saturday. Wow. So being that we were young kids, we'd we'd do a gig and it was probably on a Friday or Saturday night and finish at one o'clock and then you know, then then we we're gonna stay up and pull an all nighter. Yeah, that that's fun. what we're gonna do. We're gonna sure. have, we're gonna carouse around yeah. the streets. So we we were up late finished the gig and we went for a walk down St. Paul Street. And there used to be a place at the bottom of the Leonard Hotel called the Coffee Pot, I think it was. It was a 24 hour coffee shop. Yep. So we, we'd go there a lot after. Um, across the street was the Montebello Inn. Oh, God, and yeah. Natalie Cole was playing there. Really? Yeah. And I, and I was familiar with Natalie Cole because my mom used to listen to Nat King Cole. Oh, and I, I learned to really appreciate that music and I had a lot of respect for it. So she played at the uh, Montebello. Her and, and somebody else from her band and her agent, I, manager, came up into the coffee pot and they sat with us at our table. And she was sitting right beside me. And I was kind of, I mean, that was a long time ago. So she hadn't quite become famous yet. Otherwise, but, she but, wouldn't be in St. Catharines. Uh, yeah, you know, so she was playing the bars that we were playing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I, on a a level above us for sure but she was just as pleasant as could be just humble like no pretense just a really pleasant young lady eh? and I'll, I'll never forget that i'm i'm going i'm sitting beside nat king cole's daughter it was almost like it didn't seem real and then there was another time we played in um peterborough and uh, back in the day, when the wrestling, when uh, there was the Sheik and Andre oh my the Giant. And, oh, uh, yes. Okay. I used Those to guys. love it. I loved wrestling. <laughs> so the wrestling the wrestling thing went through Peterborough. There was an all-night coffee shop there. And we we always found the all-night coffee shops <laughs> wherever we played. Well, because you didn't and, want to go to bed. Yeah, no. So we, we went to Fuller's Restaurant. And then uh, in walks, uh, I think the Sheik was there. I'm not sure. His manager the weasel or whatever his name was, <laughs> and then and Andre the Giant. They were all buddy-buddy. How They're did you up... recognize Andre? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he stood out in the crowd. Yeah. So he sat at our table. Really? Yeah. And, and yeah, there I'm, I'm stood. Man, that guy's head, like you can't, it was massive. <laughs> it was it was about three and a half feet across his forehead, eh? Yeah. And he ordered a salad, and they brought him a, a giant mixing bowl for a salad. <laughs> yeah, eh? yeah. So we were sitting there, I'll never forget it, sitting there with Andre the Giant and the Sheik and the Weasel. I have a great question for you. What's that? What if you won a billion dollars tomorrow morning? What yeah. would you do with the money? Well, <laughs> I'd give some to Roy. <laughs> and he didn't even I'd, ask. Yeah. Uh, I'd get new brakes on my car. <laughs> That's a good, no, a good thinking. I, I, you know what? Uh, seriously? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably a lot of people say this, but for me, it, it's true. I would, I would, to people that that are in my life that are close to me, I would I would lay cash on them. Sure. People, especially people that I know are struggling and have struggled, I would say, here you go. You don't ever have to struggle again. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I I make sure my family was okay. What would this planet be like? If everyone disappeared, every human vanished. Mm. And I thought the planet would not only continue, but it would probably do better. Sure. Like would. life would continue. Oh. Yeah, and I thrive. Thought, yeah. yeah. So we're just like the every insect, or every mammal that's anything that's any living organism that's on this planet. We're part of this whole big system, just one little tiny part. Yeah. And we're not really contributing a whole lot. If, if anything, we're screwing it up. So if everybody yep. was sucked off of some big cosmic vac... vac <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ted. Better phrase that a different way. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me finish. You're going to like this. A big cosmic vacuum cleaner su <laughs> sucked and I use that word gingerly, <laughs> all the people off the planet, right? <laughs> the planet would do better. They definitely be <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Call him Dr. Freud, Dr. Freud. Oh, my oh yeah, that, that's funny. Well, yeah, that, that's really cool, because, uh, I mean, I... I 
not a lot of people sit and talk about things like that mm -hmm. that we're talking. To me, those are those are the real things. That's that's real. I mean, everybody can get caught up in their life. We have to make money. We have to go to work. Yeah, gotta, of course. The rat race. You're out there. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. But boy, oh boy, when you get back to the just the grassroots get of life. Get back to and, yeah, survive. To me, the basic of life is survival. Okay, so Dan right. Diggins. Yes. This has uh, been a hoot. It's been fantastic. I, I, really I, good. Uh, this has been a, a, a real uh, pleasure for me. And uh, I hope we do it again. Actually, we can do it any time that you want to do it. Uh -huh. I'm available for you. Okay. And I thank uh, Roy and Roy Studio Adventures. Right. And I thank uh, your guitar that you haven't named. <laughs> yeah. 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 And thank if you, you uh, ever want to write a song with mm -hmm. me. Yeah. We may I'm, venture into that, Ernie. We'll see. We'll see how if, that plays out. If you ever want your career ruined, <laughs> contact me. <laughs> I think I'll take a hard pass on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see you, Roy. Uh, see you, Roy. Thanks, man. Thanks, Ernie, buddy. My pleasure, man. Thank you. My pleasure. You bet. Remember, be good to each other. Go out and see a live band. And until next time. <laughs>